lightning are in rain. When the hurly burly's done, when the battle's lost and won, that will be ere the set of sun. <sighs> but all's too weak for brave Macbeth. <coughs> well, he deserves that name. Disdaining fortune with his brandished steel, which smoked a bloody execution. Like Vadler's minion, carved out his passage till he faced the slave, which ne'er shook hands nor bade farewell to him, till he unseen her from the nave to the chops and fixed his head upon her battlements. Were such things here as we do speak about? <laughs> Why we eaten on the insane root that takes the reason prisoner? Your children shall be king. <laughs> you shall be king. And Cawdor too, was it not so? To the self-same tune and work. Who's here? They have not yet come back, but I have spoke with one that saw him die, who did report that very frankly he confessed his treason, implored your highness's pardon, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like believing it. He died as one who had been studied in his death, to throw away the dearest thing he owed as for a careless trifle. No art to find the mind's construction in the face. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust. Glams thou art, and Cawdor, and shalt be what thou art promised. Yet, I do fear thy nature. It is too full the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Thou wouldst be great, art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. What thou wouldst highly, that wouldst thou holily, wouldst not play false, and yet wouldst wrongly win. Thou'st have, great Glams, that which cries, thus thou must do, if thou'st have it, and that which rather thou dost fear to do than wishes should be undone. This even-handed justice commends the poisoned ingredients of our own chalices to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First, I am his kinsman and subject, strong both against the deed. Then as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan hath been so clear in his great office, hath borne his faculties so meek, that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet-tongued, against the deep damnation of his taking off. Who's there? A friend. <laughs> but sir, you not yet arrest? The king's abed. He has sent unusual, he's been unusual pleasure and sent great largesse to your office. Being unprepared, our will became the servant to defect, <laughs> which else should free have wrought. All's well. Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, yet I see thee still. Are thou not, fatal vision, sensible to feeling as a sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind? My husband? I have done the deed. Didst thou not hear a noise? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Did thou not speak? When? Now. As I descended? I. Hark! Who lies in the second chamber? Donald Bain. It's a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. One did laugh in his sleep, and one cried murder, that they did wake each other. Oh, what hands are these? Oh. They pluck out mine eyes. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood from my hands? No. This my hands will rather the multitude in his seas incarnate, making the green one red. Was it so late, friend, here you went to bed that you do lie so late? Well, we were carousing till the second cup. And drink, sir. It is a great provoker of three things. And what three things this drink especially provoke? Very, sir. Nose painting. Sleep. And urine! Some say the earth was fervorous and did shake. It was a rough night. My young remembrance could not parallel a fellow to it. Oh, horror! Horror, tongue no heart cannot conceive nor name thee. What's the matter? matter? Confusion now hath made his masterpiece. Most sacrilegious murder hath broke out the Lord's anointed temple and stole thence the life of the building. What is it you say, the life? Me, you, his majesty. Approach the chamber and destroy your eyes with a new gorgon. Let's not consort with them. To show an unfelt sorrow is an office the false man does easy. Isle to England, 
To Ireland I, our separated fortune shall keep us both the safer. Where we are, there's daggers in men's smiles, the near in blood, the nearer bloody. Good father, thou seest the heavens is troubled with man's act, threatens the bloody stage. By the clock tis day, yet dark night strangles the traveling lamp. Is it the night's predominance or the day's shame that darkness does the face of earth and tomb when living light should kiss it? To be thus is nothing but to be safely thus. Our fears in Banquo stick deep, and in his royalty of nature, he hath that that should be feared. Within that dauntless temper of his mind, he hath a wisdom that doth guide his valor to act in safety. There's none but he whose being I do fear. How now, my lord, why do you keep alone? Of sorriest fancies your companions making, using those thoughts which should indeed have died with them they think on? Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. We have scorched the snake, not killed it. But who did bid thee join with us? Macbeth. Ah, it is not a mistrust. She delivers our officers and what we do to the next just. Then stand with us. The west yet glimmers with some streaks of day, now spurs the later traveler apace. To gain the timely inn and near approach is the subject of our watch. Hark, I hear horses. What is it that moves your highness? What have you have done this? What, my good lord? What? Thou cannot say I did it. Never shake thy gory locks at me. Gentlemen, rise. His highness is not well. Sit, worthy friends. My lord is often thus and hath been from his youth. Pray you, keep seat. The fit is momentary, upon a thought he will be well again. If much you note him, you shall offend him and extend his passion. Feed and regard him not. Though bladed corn be lodged and trees bone down, though castles topple all their warders' heads, though palaces and pyramids do slope their heads towards their foundations, till the treasure of no nature's Germans do tumble altogether, even till destruction sicken, answer me to what I ask you. Speak, command, well answer. Then My former speeches have but hit your thoughts, which can interpret farther. Only I say things have been strangely born. The gracious Duncan was pitied of Macbeth. Mary, he was dead. And the right valiant Banquo walked too late. Whom you may say, if it please you, Fleon's killed, for Fleon's fled. What, with worms and flies? What I get, I mean, and so do they. Poor bird, thou'st never feel the net nor the line, the pitfall nor the gin. Why should I, mother? Poor bird, they're not set for. My father's not dead for all you're saying. Yes, he is dead. And what would thou do for a father? Nay, how will you do for a husband? Why, I can buy me twenty at any market. All right, and here from gracious England have I offer of goodly thousands. But for all this, when I shall tread upon the tyrant's head or wear it on my sword, this poor country will have more vices than it had before. More suffer and more sundry ways than ever by him that shall succeed. What should he be? Observe her, stand close. You see her eyes are open. Aye, but their shunts are shut. What is it she does now? Look how she rubs her hands. It is an accustomed action to seem thus washing her hands. I have known her to continue in this a quarter of an hour. Wherefore was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and that is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Thou liest! Before tired with my sword, I shall prove the lie thou speak. Ah! 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 I see thee compassed with thy kingdom's pearl, that speak my salutation in their minds and whose voices I desire aloud with mine. Hail! 
King of Scotland. Hail, King of Scotland. Hail, King of Scotland. This and what needful else remains for us to do, by the grace of grace, we will perform in measure, time, and place. So thanks to all at once and to each one for whom we invite to see us crowned at school. <laughs>